This is the day that the <laughs> This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. You don't have to make it. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Come on. This is the day. Come on. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on. Let the, let the control go. He already made it. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. He didn't need your help. Amen. Go somewhere and sit down. Amen. And enjoy it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Amen. You thinking that, come on. This is the day that the Lord has made. He don't need your help making it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Past tense. He already made it. You don't have to assist him in it. Amen. You stressed out. Amen. You getting sick now. Amen. You getting diseases now. Why? Because you think you got to make it. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. So, so, so this is the meal that grandma has made. Amen. I want to make it practical for you. This is the meal that grandma made. Amen. I will rejoice. But I will enjoy it. This is the meal. Grandma didn't ask me to go grocery shopping. Grandma didn't ask me to, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 get the food for. Grandma didn't ask me to clean it. Grandma didn't ask me to prep it. Grandma didn't ask me to prep All grandma asked me to do is come down and enjoy it. <laughs> come on, somebody. Am I talking to somebody? That's all. My, that, all grandma asked me to do. Amen. As a matter of fact, the majority of the time, we would drive there and it would already be ready when we got ready. When we got there, I'm like, come on. Am I talking to anybody? It would be ready when we got there. So this is the day that the Lord has made. The meal has already been prepared. The meal has already been purchased. The price has already been bought. Amen. The meal is already done. Just, just sit down and enjoy it. Amen. And here's the thing. Grandma, I know what you like. Grandma, I know what you want. It's all there. Sit down. And this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. And now look, we, we, we talking about being successful. Amen. So if you're watching, we're talking about you being successful in every single area. Triple, double. We're talking about 120. We're talking about 360. We're talking about a uh, 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 fruitful, multiply, have dominion, subdue. Amen. We're talking about uh, uh, abundant, uh, 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 exceedingly abundantly beyond. Oh, come on, somebody. If you want to know what we're talking about, it's been this theme for the last few weeks where we're just talking about like getting all into the Jeremiah 29, 11. We've been talking about the fact that we don't have a lot of years left on this earth and we definitely don't have a lot of youth left on this earth. And so while we have youth and while we have life, amen, we ought to just be all in Jeremiah 29, 11. Again, this is about prosperity. I repeat, this is about prosperity. Amen. So go to another channel if you don't want prosperity. Amen. If you don't want a healthy relationship with God, if you don't want a healthy relationship with yourself, if you don't want a healthy relationship with others, amen, if you don't want to be blessed like God told you, go somewhere else. If you're just looking for the law and legalism, you come to the wrong channel. But if the time you have left Amen. You want to be fruitful. You want to multiply. You want to have dominion. If you want to see exceedingly, abundantly, beyond anything we could think or ask. Amen. If you want to prosper, even as your soul prospers. Amen. If you come on, hallelujah. If you want to enjoy the time that you have on this earth. Amen. This message is for you. Praise God. And so uh, can I go here before we get started on last week? We talked about last time. This, this is it. This is the last time. This is it. This is the last time I'm going to say I want a relationship with my child. This is the last time. We, we're not doing that no more. This is the last time you say you want to be in good health. This is it. This is the last. We talked about it last week. This is the last time. And so here's what I want to say to you. Uh, and this is why I said this is the day that the Lord has made. What I want to say to you is just be a child. Amen. Be a child. So what do I mean by that? Just enjoy the life that God has given you. Just enjoy what you got coming to you. Amen. Just know you can't work for it. Know you can't earn it. One of the challenges I've had with both of my children, you know, is this concept of, you know, uh, dad, we're going to prove, you gonna, we're going to prove to you and mom, we're going to buy y'all a house. We're going to make good money. We're going to have this profession. I said, listen to me. It ain't, nothing, it ain't nothing you can do. Amen. There is nothing you can do to be more my child. Nothing. There is no degree you can get. There, there is no job you can get. 
There's no title you can have. There's no person you can link up with. There's no, ba- there's no grandchild you can give me. There is nothing. There's no yacht you can purchase or no plane you could buy. There's no, no, there, there's no property you can get. There's absolutely nothing you can do to be more my child. I'm talking to somebody. We're talking in the spirit realm right now. There is absolutely nothing you can do to make me mo- love you more. Nothing. There's no degree that's going to make me love you more. Amen. There's nothing you can actually do that's going to make me proud. I've been knowing you since you were a child. I know all. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. There's nothing more you can do to make God. Amen. Well, I'm going to keep the commandments. I'm going to eat this way. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pay my tithe. Amen. That's you making good decisions and being responsible. It has nothing to do with God loving you. For God so loved. (laughs) <laughs> come on church talk back to me that's got that's an ed at the end for god so loved amen for god so loved come on one more time for god so loved amen the word that he gave amen before you even got here he so he's not waiting for you to do something to do amen he's not waiting for you to love him to love him amen he's not waiting for you to pay tithe before he he's not waiting for you to be a good person before he he's not waiting for you to keep the commandments before you for god so loved eric that he gave before eric got here in 1990 for god so loved Didi before she got here in 71 for god so loved Jalen before he got here in 95 for god so loved Jada before she got here in 98 for god so loved the world that he gave there is nothing you can do to make god love you more there's nothing you can do to make god uh, more pride there's nothing you can do you are enough you are enough amen you are enough amen i didn't even know what we were having we didn't even do the ultrasound to figure out what we were having you are enough God brought Jalen into this world. Amen. There was nothing I could do to bring Jaden in this world. God brought Jaden in this world. Listen to me. You are enough. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are enough. We're talking about decision making. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're talking about decision making. Amen. And, and I want you to know, amen, you can read the Bible as much as you want. You still have to make decisions. Amen. We talked about three kinds. We talked about bad decisions. We talked about good decisions. We talked about godly decisions. And we want to get to a place that we like godly decisions. Amen. I'm about to help somebody. I'm about to help somebody. So, so how did I get to the place where the last time was the last time? Come on, watch this. God said to me, amen. Come on, come on. God said to me, in order for this to be the last time you do that, amen, this, this, this has to be the last time you make that decision. Can I just teach today? I just, I don't want to complicate it. God said, if this is going to be the last time your bank account is going to look like that, that last decision you made, you're going to have to make a different decision because that last decision is why your account looked like that. You're going to have to make this decision if your account. The last time you and Didi got into it on the cruise is because you responded this way. You made this decision. So the next time you go on a cruise and this happened, just make a different, make this decision. Don't make that decision. Don't make a bad decision. Try not to make a good decision. Make a godly decision. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. I want you to pray for your decision. I want you to pray. God, help me to be a better decision maker. God, help me to make different decisions that's going to give me different results. And don't be so stuck. See, last time was the last time because as I was talking to a friend of mine, we were talking about some stuff that we talked about 30 years ago. We talked about some stuff that we talked about 20 years ago. We talked about stuff we talked. I said, bro, it's got to stop, bro. Last time got to be the last time. And so the decisions that you've made, they're not working. Praise God. The decisions you're making are not getting you to where you want to be. Not Jeremiah 29, 11. I've been talking about it. God told me to tell you this. For I know the plans. Church, church, do you hear it? God said the plans. So what God is saying today is the only way we're going to be prosperous is that we got to follow the plans of God. So how do you follow the plans of God? You don't make bad decisions. You don't even make good decisions. You make godly decisions. Come on, come on, come on. I'm talking to somebody today. God told me, Eric, your problem is you're making bad decisions. Amen. I wasn't even making good decisions. You're making bad. Then I got to a place I was making good decisions. And God said, stop making good decisions. I need you to make godly decisions. Your whole life is going to change. Your bank account. Come on, somebody. Look at your bank account right now. Say, my bank account about to change. Look at your relationship. My relationship's about to change. Look at your health. My health about to change. Come on, look at your future. My future about to change. Come on, look at your purpose. My purpose. Look at your calling. My call. Look at, look at 
in the name of Jesus, look yourself in the mirror and say, God, I'm ready for this to be the last time. I'm ready to get everything you have for me. I'm ready to be everything you want me to be. I'm ready to do everything you want me to do. Hallelujah. We're going to walk through this. Praise God. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to show you all how. So here's the first thing I need you to do. So the first thing I need you to do, and we're going to go to the Bible, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. We're going to start there this morning. The first thing you need to do is the first thing is you need to take that area like Hannah did. Hallelujah. Hannah took to God her womb. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and the fact that she couldn't have a child and she brought it before the Lord. She brought her misery before the Lord. Amen. What I need you to do for me is I need you to bring your bank account before the Lord. I'm going to walk you through the three steps I use to get to where I am right now. Praise God. In the name of decision. In the name of Jesus, I made different decisions. Come on. In the name of Jesus, I made different decisions. Hallelujah. So the first thing I had to do, the first step, amen, biblically, Hannah came before the Lord. Hallelujah. She came before the Lord with anguish. She came before the Lord weeping bitterly. Hallelujah. And she made a vow. Amen. So the first thing you have to do, amen, and I forgot to say it on last week, is the first thing you have to do is you have to come to God. Praise God. You have to come to God. And when you come to God, there is a certain spirit or disposition you have to be in, amen, in order for God to hear you. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. So in the book of uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles 7 and 14, the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Amen. The first thing God told me to do is, Eric, you need to come and humble yourself. Hallelujah. You need to acknowledge that you're making bad decisions. And then as I got older and more mature that I'm making good decisions, but I don't want to make good decisions. I want to make godly decisions. May I remind you that we all know what a bad decision is, but a good decision is a decision that you make Hallelujah, that you make with your own wisdom. Hallelujah, you make with your own resources. Hallelujah, amen. You make of your own, that you don't need God. The Bible declares, lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Amen. So Jeremiah 29, 11 is God says, I know the plans that I have for you. So, so the only way Jeremiah 29, 11 can happen is that we have to understand God has a plan and that has absolutely nothing to do with us. And we need to get out of the way and we move, get out the way. Amen. When I move, you move just like that. Amen. That we need to get to the point. Amen. That we follow God's plan, not our wisdom, not our plan, not our mama's plan. Amen. Not our, not our direction. Amen. Not, not our degrees. Amen. Not our path. Amen. And so the Bible says, if, 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 meaning what? You have a choice in the name of Jesus. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves. Amen. Pray. Amen. Seek my face. Amen. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. Hallelujah. And I'm going to direct your path. Amen. I want to read a scripture to you real quick because I want to make sure this makes sense. So what, what is, what is, what is humility look like? Psalms 51. Praise God. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy unfailing love, according to thy great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Listen to me very closely. I want to show you. I want to show you what humility looks like. Amen. I want to show you what it looks like. David, a man after God's own heart. Amen. You need to take every decision that you have and you need to start taking it to God. I know you got an independent spirit. I know somebody hurt you in the past. I know somebody had control over your life and you don't like the way it went. I know that I know that there are people who made decisions for you and you're not grateful for the decisions they made. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I know. I know your mama did some stuff. I know your daddy did some stuff or maybe your mama wasn't there to do no stuff and your daddy wasn't there maybe you was with your grandma or your uncle and maybe some people forced you to do some stuff that you didn't want to do and now you grown and you big and bad and you saying in the name of Jesus Christ I am independent I'm going to do my thing I'm going to do it my way I got this I'm under control in the name of Jesus Christ the devil is a lie have mercy upon me oh God Go before God and say, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great passion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me, hallelujah, of all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. For I know my transgressions. Come on. Don't go before the Lord proud. Don't go before the Lord with an ego. Don't go before the Lord boastful. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight. So you are right in your judgment and justify in your verdict. Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Don't be walking around here like you got it going on. Like you, 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 like, like, like you the best thing since sliced bread. Since, like you a bag of chips with the dip. Surely I was sinful at birth. 
and sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desire faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom. And in the secret place, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have crushed rejoice. Hide not thy face from my sins and blot out all my transgressions. Create within me a clean heart, God, and renew a right spirit within me, O oh Lord. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ, do me a favor. Start taking all your decisions to God. Stop acting like you got it going on. Stop acting like your degree positions you. Amen. Stop acting like your degree positions you, amen, for your path. Amen. Stop acting like, amen, your wisdom and your knowledge positions you for your path. Stop acting like, you. listen to me, stop acting like you are God. You good. Amen. You are good. And you do make good decisions, but you ain't God. You are good. You're not God. Yes, those are good decisions. They're not godly. Yet, so, so, so take all of your decisions to God from this day forth. Amen. Take every last decision to God. Again, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, would pray, would seek my face, would turn, turn from what, Eric? Turn from what? The last time. What's the last time mean? Turn from those decisions you made to, 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 to make decisions based on the flesh, to make decisions based on pride, to make decisions based on your own wisdom. Turn. Turn from all that and do what? Turn from your wicked ways and I will hear from heaven. I will forgive them of their sins. I will hear their land. Now God is saying, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers they've offered in this place. Come on, somebody. Come on. When you go before the Lord with humility, God is saying his eyes going to be open, his ears going to be open, amen, to your prayers, and he's going to bless. Amen, I want to read something to you before, before, before I show you specifically how a, a God helped me to make decisions. Amen. This is going to blow your mind. Amen. Watch this. The Bible declares, when you get a chance, Daniel, the fourth chapter, Daniel, the fourth chapter, starting at verse uh, 28. And the Bible declares, and this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Just 12 months later, he was walking on the balcony in the royal palace in Babylon and boasted. Come on, saints, did you hear what I just said? Humble yourself before the Lord. I know you got a degree. I know. I know you got a degree. I know you live in a beautiful home. I know your credit score is pretty phenomenal. I know people know you in the city. I know you got a little title. I know you got it going on. I know when you walk around, people know. I know, I know, I know you got a talent. I know you got a gift. But do you know that all give, good gifts come from God? Do you know that? Do you know your ability to be charismatic? You know that comes from God? You know your ability to be smart? You know that comes from God? Amen. Come on. You, you're, you handsome. I know. You know that comes from God. You know you didn't make yourself handsome. I know you're fine. I know you got it going on. Amen. I know the Lord has blessed you with certain attributes and, and traits and characteristics. But do you know that you didn't produce those on your own? Do you know you, don't, you didn't manufacture those on your own? Do you know that all good gifts come from God? Amen. Do you know even the, amen. Do you know the base that I use? You know the energy that I have? You know the passion in which I speak? You know that come from God? You, you know all the stuff you got come from God, don't you? You know you got it going on, but you know you ain't got it going on because of you. You know you got it going on because of God, don't you? And all all he asked, he didn't ask to give you that stuff, take that stuff back. He didn't ask to have it back. All he said was humble yourself. All he said was acknowledge where it came from. All he said was give him honor and give him glory. All he said was don't take my glory and my honor from me. Hallelujah, praise God. And the Bible declares that Nebuchadnezzar said, look at this. <laughs> Come on, church pastor. Come on, Jamie. Did you hear what he said? Nebuchadnezzar said, look, look at, look at this. I want to help you when you're making your decisions. Don't make a decision to glorify yourself. Don't make a decision to elevate yourself. Don't make a decision to draw attention to yourself. When you're making a decision, make number one, come before God and make a decision that God is going to be glorified. And Nebuchadnezzar said, look at all of this. Babylon the Great. <laughs> church, can you just, can, church, can I just, can I act it out, church? Can I act it out? Babylon got it going on. Babylon, if you read uh, 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 in Western Civ, if you ever read in Western Civ, Babylon had it going on. Babylon was great. Amen. And, and Nebuchadnezzar, amen, God, for whatever reason, chose 
Hallelujah, Babylon. He chose Nebuchadnezzar. He chose Babylon to be great. He chose Nebuchadnezzar for a time frame to rule over it. Amen. And was it prosperous? Absolutely. But watch Nebuchadnezzar as he walks on the balcony and looks at all of what is great and gives himself the credit for it. Look at Babylon. <laughs> Look at my company. <laughs> Look at my marriage. <laughs> Look at my kids. <laughs> Look at my car. Look at the stuff that I have. Look at my title. Come on, look, look, look. Look at my speaking career. Look, look at me. Come on, look how I look. Amen. I, 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 I woo the women. I, I melt the men. Look at me. I got it going on. Look at this. <laughs> look, Nebuchadnezzar, say, look at this. Look at all. Look at all. Look at this. Look, Babylon the Great. And I built it all by myself. A royal palace adequate to display my honor and my glory. Remember what I told you? We make decisions either on principle or we make decisions on pleasure. Amen. And right now, Nebuchadnezzar is caught up on the pleasures. He's caught up, uh, 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 uh. He's caught up on pride. He caught up on his ego. Sin. The words were no more sooner out of his mouth. Then a voice out of heaven spoke. This is the verdict on you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your kingdom is taken from you. You will be driven out of human company and live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like an ox. And the sentence is for seven seasons, even enough time to learn that the most high God rules human kingdoms and puts whomever he wishes in charges. And it happened at once Nebuchadnezzar was driven out of human company, ate grass like an ox, and was soaked in the heaven's dew. Oh, come on, somebody. I, I, can I stop there? Hey, Amen. I just want to stop there. Read the rest on your own. Can I stop there? Do me a favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, when you're making decisions, can you make the first decision? Can you make the decision to come before God before all your decisions are made? And can you give God the glory and give God the honor and give God the praise? Can you humble yourself before the Almighty and say, God, even though you bless me, I don't want to do it alone. Even though you bless me, Lord, I don't want to take matters in my own hand. Even though you bless me, Lord, to have it going on and to be intelligent and smart and handsome and fine and 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 got it going and 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 have uh, my my hands have done. Can you help me, God, to humble myself before you and know that none of this will happen without you? That my life on this earth is short, but you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You had no beginning and you will have no end. Come on, somebody. Can you hum? Enough is enough. This is the last time. The last time what? The last time I make a decision not to give God the glory. The last time I make a decision without bringing God in as an, is a, as an advisor. The last time I make a decision without bringing in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The last time I just do something in my own strength, in my own wisdom, in my own might, and with my own control. The last time I do something without going before God and saying, God. Amen. Before we do every podcast, I promise y'all, CJ, pray. God, may this be the best part. Not, may we say the best things. Not, may, the, may we get, not, God, may this be the best one ever. Where? Why? So we could glorify your name. Hallelujah. Amen. And so uh, my last scripture for today, hallelujah. Amen. As I walk through this three-part process, amen. The last one, uh, uh, Matthew 7, verse 8, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to walk through it. So recently I brought my health before God and I said, God, my body does not look like uh, it's a temple for you, God. I've, I've picked up weight. Amen. And, and I'm just going to be honest with y'all. Emotionally eating. Amen. Emotionally eating. There were some things that was happening, you know, in, in, in my life. There were some things that were happening in my family. Amen. That weren't according to what I believe, what God, what, it wasn't Jeremiah 29, 11. And as a result of it, I found myself, hallelujah, and, and, and not only to mention it was happening during COVID, I found myself uh, eating comfort foods. I'm just going to be honest. I found myself, you know, going to restaurants, amen, that I had a, a, a wonderful experience at, like 
uh, 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 um, every time I would eat at Chipotle, every time I would get those chips and I would get that guac and I would get that big lemonade, amen, and I would get that burrito, amen, that chicken burrito, amen, extra rice, amen, with the two sauces on that boy, hey, come on somebody, with the cheese, amen, with the black beans, no juice, amen, with the chicken spread across evenly, oh, somebody, come on somebody, with the half side cream, amen, half green sauce, you're not hearing what I'm saying, it wasn't about just the food, it was the comfort, right? It was the comfort. It was the taste. Amen. It was the way the food would make me feel. And sort of, instead of going to prayer, amen, nothing wrong with eating, but instead of going to prayer only, instead of going to God, amen, instead of doing it in a healthy way, I find myself, there were certain foods, comfort foods, amen. So I was now, every time I would think about this situation or, you know, or, 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 or as I would go throughout the day, amen, I would find myself, and then with even family members, I would find myself going to the places that they like, uh, and I would find myself spending time with them, and we would find ourselves spending time together over a meal and we find myself eating animal fries like I don't necessarily do the burger but I was eating the animal style fries right and it was good memories and we was having a good time and it was comfort food amen and 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 and, and I wasn't paying attention to the calories and I wasn't paying attention to the intake and I wasn't paying and I came to God and I said God this is the last time I eat this way God this is the last time and so I went before God and I asked God God help me to make a better decision and God said to me I want you to pay attention I asked God God in the name of Jesus Christ what should I do and God gave me an answer to my prayer. My ask, and you, he said, I want you to drink more water. Praise God, I'm talking to somebody. I'm asking you to go before God. I'm asking you to take, amen, she took her womb. Amen, I'm asking you to take your weight. I'm asking you to take your body. I'm asking you to take your mind. I'm asking you to take your soul. I'm asking you to take your bank account. I'm asking you to take your relationship. I'm asking you to take your career. I'm asking you to take your talent. I'm asking you to take whatever it is that you're not operating in Jeremiah 29, 11, and you know you should be, take it before the Lord. And God specifically said to me, number one, you need to drink more water. Praise God in the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, God said you only need to drink water from this day forth. Don't you ever drink any more pop. Don't you ever drink any more uh, soda. Amen. Don't you drink uh, nothing, uh, a Gatorade, amen, uh, 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 energy drink. Don't you don't put nothing in your body but water, son. Your blood is is purified through water. Your body is 75. Get that shit. Don't drink no more sugar water. Drink pure water. Drink alkaline water. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, God told me, go walk. I said, God, don't run. He said, you can run occasionally if you want to, but, but running is not something you can do forever. But you can walk 10,000 miles, 15,000 miles, 20 miles a day. Try to walk 15 to 20,000 miles a day, son. Walk. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? God gave me the blueprint. God said, son, take wheat out of your diet. It's artificial. It's not real. Take candy out of your diet. There's no nutritional value in candy. In the name of Jesus, I promise y'all, it wasn't a month later, amen, in my body, I promise you, I have not lost a lot of weight, but the shape of my body looks different with water. The shape of my body looks different with kale. The shape of my body looks different with collards. The shape of my body looks different with small portions of protein. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, am I telling you I'm not tempted? Do I, I don't fall. Okay, absolutely. But God says if you make a decision to eat a certain way, you don't even have to worry about your weight. You don't even have to run a marathon. You don't even have to lift a whole bunch of weights. If you change your diet, son, everything else is going to follow. In the name of Jesus, God said it is a principle. It's not a feeling. The principle is 80% diet, 20% working out. You cannot outwork a bad diet. You cannot exercise out a poor diet. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's a principle. What you eat, amen, shapes who you are. What you put in comes out. In the name of Jesus, God said, son, you got to make different decisions. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I took my bank account before the Lord. Hallelujah. When I took my bank account before the Lord, the Lord said, son, I've given you a talent. I've given you a gift. May your gift make room for you. Put the assessment up. I want y'all to see this assessment. Amen. God told me to go look at my assessment. In the name of Jesus, I showed God, God, I want to take my bank account to the next level. God says, look at your assessment, son. 
You are a shepherd. You are a people, people. You energize people, son. You inspire people, son. You elevate people, son. You, you change people's perspectives and the way they think. You change the way you talk. You make people think mentally and it changes the way that they think, son. You help people mentally. You help people spiritually. You help people emotionally, son. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to get on Instagram Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for free, son. I need you to get on there, son. Why? Because your gift can't make room for you if you're not using your gift. I need you on Discord, son. I need you. I know you retired. I'm asking for 30 minutes, son. I need you on Discord. I need you creating content. I need you putting content out in the world, son. I don't need you just to preach, son, on Sabbath. I need you to preach, son, and put that stuff out regularly. I need you to do videos. I need you when you inspire. Why? Because your gift shall make room. No, I'm not asking CJ to do it. No, I'm not asking Carl to do it. No, I'm not asking Jamal to do it. Don't pick up that phone and call CJ. Don't pick up that phone and call Jamal. Don't pick up that phone. But yes, pick up that phone and call Quincy, right? Call QDZ. Why? Pick up that phone and call TJ and tell TJ he need to be on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because they're also, amen, a, a, a high flight attendants. Are you hearing me? God said all your blessings, son, are in your talent. They're in your gift. They're in your anointing, son. You need to be on stage as much as possible, son. You need to have a mic in your hand as much as possible, son. Oh, come on, somebody. You, that you, are, you are a particular, uh, you're a flight attendant or you're a grounds crew or you're an air traffic control or you're a pilot and you're not using that gift. God says, son, if you want to make more money, use your gift. Hallelujah. Amen. I just told y'all I went to an event. God said, leave your wife at home. I need you to go there and I need you to fellowship. Why? Because your gift is fellowship and Didi gift ain't fellowship and son. I need you to tell her to stay at home. I need you to go and I need you to fellowship. And I'm telling you, I met other authors. I met other people who are doing podcasts. I met people who have millions and millions of followers. I met people whose podcast is on Delta Airline. I met people and God said, son, if you would be friendly, if you would be kind, if you would speak. Amen. Sometimes my wife like, why are you speaking to people who ain't speaking to you. I don't speak to people so they can speak back. I speak to people because my gift is speaking. My gift is smiling. My gift is firing people up. My gift, and God said, if you would just operate in your gift. Son, you're going to make more money. If you would write a book, son, your gift is in content. Your gift is in coaching. Your gift is in uh, 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 inspiring. Your gift is in motivating. Your gift is in elevating. Son, get on that mic. I, I bought you a roadcaster, son. Turn that roadcaster on, and I want you to, I want you to uh, uh, audio book. I want you to put audio content together and just put it out. And as you put it out, your gift is going to make room. I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I went from $50,000 to $100,000 in a matter of a couple months. Why? Because I went before the Lord, and I spoke to before the Lord. I brought my wound before the Lord. What's your wounds, Hannah? Hannah, who are you? What's your wound? What are you, what's your misery? Where, where, where are you lacking? Where, where do you need assistance? Where do you need help? Come to God. God. Stop making decisions on your own. Nobody told you to think you are a child. Let daddy bless you. And the Bible says, ask and it will be given unto you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Knock and the door will be open to you. Stop making bad decisions. Stop making good decisions. Start making godly decisions. My kid, I'm going to prove, you don't got to prove nothing to me. Y'all my children. You ain't got to prove to me that you're going to be successful. You ain't got to prove to me that you can make money. You ain't got to prove to me. You can't, you actually, we actually mix ourselves up when we're trying to prove something to God. Watch what the Bible says. For everyone who asks, receives. <laughs> oh, come on, church. Jamie, come on, church pastor, come on, come on. For everyone who asks, receives. You working in your own strength and you're not even, you're not, it, listen to me. God says, for I know the plans that I have for you, not the outcomes that I have for you. I know those too. But if you follow my plans, you're going to get the outcome. We doing our own thing. We got our own path. We lean into our own understanding. God says, just bring, I gave you choice. I gave you the choice to do your own thing or come to me because I wanted you to be a free will. I wanted you to, I wanted there to be love. I didn't want you to be a robot, but I didn't give you the decision making process for you not to. I talk to men who make decisions without talking to their wife. I meet wives who make decisions without talking to their husband. This is your help me. This is your partner. This is your soulmate. This is your best friend. How in the world are you making decisions for your family without even, God didn't give you a wife not to, God didn't, God didn't give you a business partner for you not to talk to your business. 
A lot of us, again, we want to surround ourselves with weak people because we want to do what we want to do and we want to do it and we don't want to be checked. We don't want to be corrected. We don't, we don't want the plans that we have to be challenged. We don't want the people to say that maybe there's a better way to do this. We like, we're so independent. We want to do our thing. We get so geeked up about our path and our plan that we don't consult nobody. We don't want to get no advisors. We don't want no coach. We just want to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And God has said, that's not how it works. I'm asking you to come to me. Amen. Bring your choice to me. I love you. I, I have the best. Come. Why? Because for everyone who asks, they receive. For everyone who seeks, he finds. It's right here. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. All right, let's take it back. Let's take it back. I want to do this one more time. We're going to get out of here. Ask. Go to God with your decisions. So they're not bad or good. They're godly. And when they're godly, whatever it touches is going to come to pass. Ask and it shall be given unto you. You don't want to ask because you're thinking, man, if I ask, it's going to mess up my plan. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Watch this. Uh, I love verse eight. It says, for everyone who asks, not some, not most, not many, for everyone who asks receives. And to the one who seeks, he finds. And to the one that knocks, the door will be open. Why? Because which of you has sons that ask for bread and you give them a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, you give him a snake. If you need, then though, you, I'm sorry, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? Hallelujah. Praise God. I leave you in the name of Jesus. This sermon is about one thing, making better decisions. And how does that start? Going to God and bringing your womb before the Lord and telling God what your misery is and humbling yourself before the Lord and not boasting before God and not taking God's credit. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to make better decisions. Last time is going to be the last time. This is about, this is about being prosperous. <laughs> <laughs> this is about being prosperous, Lord. This is, about, this, this, this is about being healthy and whole and well. This is about every part of our lives being blessed. And it all starts with decisions. It starts with the decision to make the decision by myself or make a decision with you. It starts with asking. It starts with seeking. It starts with knocking. It starts with you, and it ends with you. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord of hosts. Plan, plans that you prosper. And so, Father, we come right now, and we say we're sorry. We're sorry, Lord, for making our own decisions. We're sorry for all the bad decisions we made. We're sorry for all the good decisions that we made, taking, your, taking you out the process, taking you out the equation trying to do it on our own. We apologize for bragging and being braggadocious as if we the ones that created ourselves, as if we're the ones that gave us our brain, as if we're the ones that created our DNA, as if we're the ones that created our talents and our gifts and our tra traits and our attributes and our, our, our character and our talent. We're acting like we the ones. Forgive us for boasting. And now we will humble ourselves before and we will make godly decisions so that we will be blessed and our families will be blessed. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. Have mercy upon his ministry. Have mercy upon us. Bless us indeed. As we go into this next season, Lord, bless us, bless us, bless us. And we'll be so careful to give you all honor, all glory, all praise. May we make decisions based on principles and not pleasure. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life the insatiable desire for wisdom and, and position and titles. Have mercy upon us, Lord. And may every decision we make be based on your word. We ask these things not because we're worthy, but in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC, for your donations and tithes. 
If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org, where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.